Welcome everybody. A uh, little bit of the introduction. My name is Przemysław Kacprzak. I'm a SSI International Training direct Director, mainly focused on rebreathers. Uh, I'm taking care of the Revo, JG, CCR, Horizon, AP and Poseidon for the SSI. Uh, because nobody can pronounce my name, I, I use a shorter version, which I wrote it down. It's Przemek. But because it's also quite difficult to pronounce, people usually call me PK or usually the US friends call me Bob because it's easy. So I will do the presentation about the gradient factors for you today. I hope you will like it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask those questions during the presentation in the comments and later on I will try to answer all these questions. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. So. Let's begin. Understanding gradient factors. So, the gradient factors, probably most of us are using the gradient factors in your dive computers, dive software. We have those two magic numbers that we can play with. And today, the goal of, of, of my presentation is to explain you how it works and what actually those numbers means. So, likely, after this presentation, you will be able to adjust those numbers to the dives, to the type of the dives that your guy is doing with a little bit more understanding of what is happening in your software or how is your dive computer using those numbers. Uh, so before we start, a few information, main, few main assumptions. First of all, during this presentation I will be using mostly randomly selected numbers. So don't pay too much attention of, on the values uh, of, uh, on the screen and, or on, uh, and on, the, on the graph because most of those numbers are, are completely randomly selected. They are not representing real numbers and real values of, of Billman algorithm. Uh, I just use them to make it simple and to make, uh, to make it easy to understand because we are not focusing on how actually the algorithm works. We, we don't want to learn here how to manually calculate our decompression. We want to understand how the gradient factors works. So to make it simple, I simplify it in some, in, uh, in some points and I just use random numbers. Okay, uh, even more, at some part of this uh, presentation, I'm using simplifications sometimes even not true informations but i will i will uh, i will i will point them that this is actually not that true but sometimes it's easier to make it simple because it, it doesn't matter in the per, in, in the sake of the exercise that we'll be discussing but make it makes it more simple for you to understand just to give you an example of what i'm talking about in the graph that you're gonna see in a minute we'll have an ambient pressure and the tissue pressure representation where on the tissue pressure on the surface will be one bar. For those of you who are the nitrox diver at least or above, the, you know very well that on the surface we are, the, the, the tissue pressure is not actually one bar, it's 0 0.79 because only the nitrogen is the one that is considered as a gas that is loaded into our tissues. But for us, it will be much easier to operate in, in, in the values like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bars instead of 0 0.79, 1.58, and so on and so on. So I made those simplifications, sometimes even uh, lies, but this, this is only because I want to make those presentations a, a presentation as simple as possible. And those numbers are actually completely not important uh, for the sake of, of this exercise, for, 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 this, for the purpose of that presentation. So if you say, see on the graph any wrong information in terms of the numbers, don't worry about them. I did it for the purpose, just to make it easier for you to understand the main topic of this, uh, of this presentation. Okay, so there is no way to understand the gradient factors if we don't understand some basics of the compression theory on gassing, of gassing um, of our body. So I will just briefly uh, explain this for those of you who know how it works very well. This is just a nicely remi reminder. And for those who don't, that is important uh, to understand. 
First of all, I like to, I always during my courses, I like to say in this part of the presentation that in the universe, everything wants to be equal. Everything try, tries to be equal. So if you take two items, one is hot, one is, one is cold, and you join them together, they will equalize the temperature. If you take two containers with a different pressure and you connect them and open it, the pressure will equalize, right? So the gas from where is higher pressure will travel to the place when it's less until they equalize. So everything goes to, to equilibrium in the universe. So this is basically how we are on gassing and off gassing. So on the slide, on the slide right now, you can see that on the left side, we have uh, the tissue or tissue compartment pressure in our body. So this little human icon represents our body. So wherever we decide how many tissues are in our body, it doesn't matter, but we have some gas that is dissolved in our tissues. Okay, so if you are right now on the surface and let's assume that nobody was diving for the last two, three days, we are completely off gas, which means we equalized the pressure of, of, of nitrogen with an ambient pressure. So the pressure of the nitrogen in our body is 0 0.79. And also the pressure of the gas we are breathing, so also the ambient pressure, 0 0.79 because as we know from the nitrox classes this is the partial pressure of the nitrogen in air and the surface so the the point when when the gas can travel inside or outside is actually our lungs our alveoli where is the diffusion of the gas has a place so just about just depends on where is the higher pressure the gas will travel in or out Right now, it's not traveling anywhere because we are in equilibrium. We have the same pressure in our lungs and in our body. So let's see what happens if we descend. Once we descend on 10 meters, let's imagine for the sake of this exercise, we just go immediately on 10 meters. So uh, we don't consider a descent phase for this exercise. We just go to 10 meters. Right now, in our body, we still have a partial pressure of nitrogen of 0 0.79 bar because this is what, what it was in the surface and we just immediately went down to 10 meters. And now what has changed is the gas we are breathing, right? Because we all know that we are breathing the gas at, at ambient pressure. So if it's air, now the nitrogen is 1.58 bar because it's twice more than on the surface. So what happened now is we create the pressure difference between what is in our lungs, what we are breathing, and what is in our body. We call it the pressure gradient. So now we can see that the pressure is higher in our alveoli or in our lungs, and the pressure in our body is less. So now the gas will travel into our body. So we will be on gassing. We will take, we will take the nitrogen into our body, through the eye of the all light, our bloodstream, and our, then our blood will transport the nitrogen all around our body. So if we go to 20 meters, for example, we have the same situation. Again, we just imagine we just descend in, in one second to 20 meters. We still have 0 0.79 bar of nitrogen in our body, but now in our lungs, the pressure of nitrogen is 2.37. So the, the pressure difference is now higher than it was on 10 meters, it's 1.58. And if I go to 30 meters, it's 2.37, the pressure gradient. And on 40 meters, it's 3.16 bar of nitrogen. So we also know that the, the bigger the pressure difference, the gas will travel faster. You can imagine the car tire. If you have small car with the car tire pressure of 1.5 bar, and then next to it, you have a huge off-road car with the big wheels and then the tires are pressurized to, I don't know, three and a half, four bars maybe. If you just make a pinch hole in the tire, for sure the gas will travel much faster from the car where the pressure is higher in the tires when, uh, compared to the car where the pressure is lower. Same situation happens here. If we go immediately to 40 meters and we create the pressure difference of 
3.16 bar, the nitrogen will travel, let's call it, much faster through the alveoli to our bloodstream compared to, let's say, on 10 meters. This is exactly why deeper we are, our non-decompression times are shorter because we are actually taking much more oxygen, uh, sorry, much more nitrogen in the same period of time compared to 10 meters. And also our decompression buildup is, is faster because we are on gassing much more nitrogen simply because the pressure difference in, in our alveoli, in our lungs, is higher than if we are shallower. Let's see what happens when we go back, when we ascend. So, the next slide shows us the ascent. Oh, I, I, so, imagine that we are on this 40 meters. We stay there long enough that our body is completely saturated. Okay, so whatever it takes, it doesn't matter how many hours we have to spend there, at some point we will equalize the pressure in our body with an ambient pressure. Of course, we are still talking only about the, uh, the nitrogen. Uh, the same as we did on the surface. It just takes time. So this is actually what commercial divers are using. The commercial divers, we call them saturated, saturated divers because they are fully saturated. At some point, when their body will fully um, saturated, which means their body will have as much inert gases as is in, in the ambient pressure, they will not get any more. They are in the equilibrium. So right now, it doesn't matter if they stay there for one week or one month under the water, working, welding, whatsoever, their decompression will not change because they don't take any more gas. So at some point, every tissue in our body will be fully saturated. It's just about how much time does it take. So let's imagine for our exercise that we have our body fully saturated at 40 meters and then we ascend to 30 meters. What happens now, we create the same pressure difference between our body and our lungs or our body and the gas we're breathing, but now it's the other way around. Now the pressure in our body is higher than in the gas we're breathing, so the gas will travel out, will be off-gassing simply because there's more gas in our body than uh, at ambient uh, pressure or in the breathing gas. So we'll be off-gassing because always gas traveling is traveling from where is more to where is less. And again, the same rule apply. If we go shallower, we are creating more pressure difference. So more pressure difference, we are uh, off-gassing faster, more efficient. So we could say that Okay, that's great then. So we can go to 100 meters. And once we finish our dive, we should go directly to the surface because then the pressure difference will be the highest. So our off-gassing process will be most efficient. And that is true. It will, would be most efficient, but we all know that this is impossible because we will probably die because of the decompression sickness. And we will talk about why is that later on. So. Because the only way I can communicate with you is with this I like, I don't like or whatever. Can you please give me thumbs, thumbs up if that is clear to everybody and you guys understand it. Just give me thumbs up. I will now open here my... Okay. There's a delay about like 10-15 seconds when I ask the question before you hear it. So now I have to wait. Okay, good. So, uh, so we can continue, I believe. I didn't see any. Okay. Okay, now it's good. Okay, great. Now I see thumbs up. Perfect. So let's continue then. What now we have on the screen is the graph that we will spend the the most of our presentation with. So, this graph represents the the relation between the pressure in our tissues and an ambient pressure. So we can consider this as a gas we are breathing 
or we can consider this as simply as a depth. So the, the x-axis is basically the ambient pressure. It's represented in, in bars or we can simply convert it to the depth. So one bar is a surface, two bars 10 meters and so on and so on. So this is basically the depth, okay? Then we have y-axis, which represents the pressure in bar in our body. It's, it, it's labeled a tissue because when I, I will explain you later on that this graph actually is representing one particle tissue compartment. It's not actually even tissue, but I will get to that. It's a one particle tissue compartment in our body. So, and this is the pressure of the gas that is dissolved in it, okay? Then we have very important line to understand. I call it equilibrium line because that, this is the point on that graph. Whenever I put my pointer on that line, it means that the value on the x-axis is exactly the same as a value on the y-axis. So if I put, for example, the line here, I go down, it's three, four bar. If I go left, it's also four bar, which simply means to us that whenever we are on that line in our, uh, in our presentation, it means that the, the pressure in the tissue is equalized with an ambient pressure of the gas we are breathing. Or we can say the tissue is fully saturated because the tissue is fully saturated when the pressure in the tissue is the same as an ambient pressure. So first of all, we know that the tissue now, it cannot take any more of nitrogen or helium or whatever gas we are considering. And it stays like this until we change the depth. Okay, so whenever we are on that line, it means that the tissue is in, is in equilibrium with an ambient, okay? And then we have the surface line, let's call it. So this is the line that represent, represents one bar of ambient pressure, which is basically the surface. So whenever we will touch this line in any point of it, wherever is it here, or is it here, or is it here, or is it here, it means simply we've just hit the surface. We just finish our dive. We are on the surface because if the ambient pressure is one bar, it means we are on the surface. Okay, great. So just to make sure we understand this graph correctly, I will make an example for you. Imagine we are at that point when the red dot is, okay? So if we are at that point with our tissue, I have two information from it. I can say that right now I'm on 40 meters depth because the ambient pressure is five bar. And I also can say that the pressure in, the, in that tissue is right now 3.3 bar. So I can even say that at that point I'm on gassing because the pressure in the tissue is less than an ambient pressure. So according to our theory that everything goes to equilibrium, right now the gas will travel into our body. So we will be on gassing. Last example is when the red dot is here. This means we are on the surface. And this is the simplification I was mentioning in the beginning, or I would say even a lie. It's not exactly true, because right now you can, you can see that the ambient pressure, is, ambient pressure is one bar, which is correct, but the pressure in the tissue is one bar on the, on the graph, which is not true. We know that it's actually 0.79. Uh, but it would be much easier for us to work here on the full values, no decimal points, to, to be much easier for us to understand uh, the main concept of this presentation. So this is a little bit of the simplification. Don't be picky on that. It just the way I decide to do it. It is not true in real life, but that will make our presentation uh, easier. Okay, so now I want to have a thumbs up. If this graph you understand because we work with that graph a lot. So I want to make sure you understand what represents what. If something is not clear for you, please type me in a comment. I will try to explain one more time. So now I'll wait my, my few seconds. Okay, great. So it means we can 
we can continue. So now using our graph, what we will do, let's analyze what is happening when we go diving. So we descend, we start our descent. So when we descend, the ambient pressure increase, increase. So we should go to the right direction on the screen. So we will slowly, slowly descend until we go to 40 meters. If you take a close look, that red line, that red line represents the depth and the pressure in our tissue. You can see that the line is slightly angled up. Why is that? Because at the moment that we descend, even on one meter, we created a higher ambient pressure of the nitrogen. Let's imagine we just discussed air diving at the moment, so it's only nitrogen. So we, we've created a higher pressure of the nitrogen in breathing gas than it was in our body. So we are on gassing, which means if you are on gassing, the pressure in the tissue slowly goes up. If the pressure slowly goes up, it must go up on the y-axis. So it means that the line that represents descending phase should be pointing to the right direction, but also slightly up. Because once we get there, once we get to the 40 meters rack, let's say, we are already on gas our body. So the pressure in our tissue is already slightly increased. Uh, we don't know how much, it depends how, how long did we descend. If we descend slowly, we'll take more gas. If we, didn't, if we descend faster, maybe less. It doesn't matter for us. Just, what we, just to make sure we understand the graph, this line is angled up because we are already on gassing. So now, once we get to our wreck, we we now we enjoy it. We just swim around, let's imagine we are the perfect divers, our buoyancy is super, we, have, we are controlling our depth perfectly, just like Adam is doing usually, <laughs> and his depth is like 40000. So he never changed the depth if, if he don't want to. So Adam is swimming around the wreck, I'm not talking about Adam Wood, by the way, right? So Adam is joining the wreck. His poise is perfect. His trim is perfect. So he don't change the ambient pressure at all. So now his ambient pressure will not change. But what will change is Adam's tissue loading because now he is here. So the ambient pressure is five bar and his tissue loading. So the pressure in the tissue is like, I don't know, 1.1 maybe here. So once he enjoy the wreck, he goes up on our graph, just simply because he is on gassing. And how long he will be on gassing? Simply as that, he will be on gassing as long as he will get into equilibrium. So once all his body will be saturated with five bar of nitrogen, and now is again simplification because we know very well that it's not five bar of nitrogen because there's also some oxygen, but that, that is the simplification I will be using. So he will be on gassing himself as long as he will get fully saturated. When he gets fully saturated, it means he's on our equilibrium line, which means the partial, uh, sorry, the ambient pressure is five bar and the pressure of the gas in, the, in his tissues is also 5 bar. From that moment on, Adam can stay there as long as he wants and his decompression obligation will not change. Okay, at some point we want to go up, we want to finish our dive, we want to descend, so when, when uh, sorry, ascend, so when we ascend, we go to the left side on our graph, simply because we are low, okay, so simply because we are lowering the ambient pressure. And actually, what we can say, just before we start our ascent, that if we are talking about Billman algorithm, I will get to that later on, I will just tell you now as a fun fact, that the first tissue of Billman will get that, that uh, fully saturated stage after 24 minutes. It, it's not exactly true again, because we all know those of you who did dive master uh, course they know about the half times that every tissue is saturating with the half times and after three half times we consider tissue as fully saturated 
which actually is not fully, it's 98.44% of ambient pressure, but let's call it fully saturated. Okay, so why I'm putting this information, this graph, just simply for you to know that every time when you do the longer bottom time than, tw than 24 minutes, at least one tissue compartment of Billman algorithm is fully saturated. I will get to that 1, 2, 3, 4, 16 tissue compartment later on. Just now, as a fun fact, you can remember that tissue number 1 of Billman is 24 minutes, uh, and that it means after 24 minutes it is fully, fully saturated, because this is 4 minutes half times, and after 6 half times we are fully, uh, fully saturated. Ok, great, so now we finally try to descend. Ok, well, uh, sorry, again, ascend. So now, when we ascend, we just simply go uh, to the left side of the, of, the, of the graph. And now, if you take a close look, our line is angled down. Because once we crossed the equilibrium line, we are in off-gassing phase. Because wherever, wherever we are here, if you think about, the, it means that the pressure in the tissue is higher than the pressure in our lungs or the ambient pressure which means we will be off-gassing. So, whenever we are off-gassing, the pressure in our tissue is going down slowly, but it is. So, once we ascend, we are already started our off-gassing phase. And on that graph, we just hit the surface, which means that the ambient pressure is one bar. At the moment, when the pressure in our tissue is still four and a, four and a half bar. So this is this nitrogen or the nitrogen and the helium that we still have in our bodies after the dive. This is exactly why it is. We all know that the example I just, I just did is actually not, not realistic. If we spend 24 minutes on 40 meters and then we just directly go to the surface, for sure we will have the compression sickness. So this is actually not a realistic scenario. This is scenario just to explain you how the descent, bottom phase and an ascent works on our graph. Give me a thumb up if that is clear guys for you. Is, is that explanation clear? Great. Thank you. Perfect. So we're gonna move to the more advanced topics in just a minute. Just one more simple example. I want to show you how on this graph a non-decompression dive will look like. So now let's imagine that we are at that point. So we descend to 40 meters and now we stay there we stay there, we are on-gassing, on-gassing, on-gassing until that point. We are not yet fully saturated, but we decide to ascend anyway. And that is after four minutes, according to Doppler's limit. The four minute is a non-decompression non -decompression limit on 40 meters. So now we have to start ascent. So now we ascend, but you still during the ascent, this line is slightly but angled angled up because we are still on gassing. If, if what, every time we are on the right side of equilibrium line, it means ambient pressure is higher than the, the tissue, tissue loading, so we are on gassing. So even if we decide to ascend, we are still on gassing until we get to that point, somewhere on the way up, when the pressure in the tissue uh, will be uh, pressure this will be higher than the ambient pressure. At that point, the line will be angled down, so we'll actually start off gassing. So you can imagine this on that example, which is not necessarily the true. When we decide to ascend from 40 meters up, we are ascending up to more or less 20 meters, and up to 20 meters we are still on gassing. And from 20 meters up, we are off-gassing until we hit the surface. 
and we in this example we hit the surface with the pressure in our tissue of 2.96 so this is actually the real value the tissue number one can hit the surface with a 2.96 bar of pressure and we should not have the compression sickness so we still have some nitrogen in our body after the dive but this amount of nitrogen is more let's say acceptable we should not have the compression sickness after that that dive great so if we summarize this we can divide our graph clearly into two phases red one is off gassing part and the blue one is on gassing part whenever we are on the blue part we will be on gassing because mathematically every time we are on the blue part the ambient pressure is always higher than the pressure in the tissue so the travel the gas is traveling into our body and whenever we cross the, the equilibrium line and we are going to the red zone we can call it decompression zone this is where we are actually decompressing uh, of gassing because wherever we are on this red part of the graph the pressure in our tissue is higher than the ambient pressure so this is very important for us to understand now this is our off gassing zone and this is our on gassing zone so now let's discuss about the Bildman algorithm you've seen probably in your computers in your uh, in your computer software or even the tables there's uh, the uh, description ZHL16C so ZHL16C is basically uh, Albert Bielman algorithm which was designed by Albert Bielman he was actually working on it since 1956 if I'm not wrong and he was working on it all the way up to 80s on 1983 he published his book where when he uh, published all his research about the compression theory and uh, about the algorithm uh, of uh, about the algorithm and that he called ZHL16C so ZH comes from Zurich because Albert Bean was Swiss he was working in Switzerland so ZH is simply Zurich L is limits or linear actually I found two uh, sources that were explaining this uh, this L some sources tells limits some sources tells linear so to be honest I'm not sure what was the Billman's uh, Bilman, what, what the Bilman had in mind in his uh, book that he uh, published there, he don't explain that so I'm not sure if anybody knows some of you have some some reliable information about that what the L stands for limits linear it might be something else but please let, let me know 16 means 16 tissue compartments so the graph I was explaining to you in a minute uh, is basically one tissue graph so our body is built of many many tissues it's not 16 it's I don't know if the medicine knows actually how many tissues we have I, be I believe we don't because every part of our body I know blood muscle uh, brain uh, spine bones whatever I don't know hair nail you name it these are the tissues and, and those each tissue has its own characteristics what is interested for us for the competition theory is simply how fast the tissue is on gassing and on gassing uh, on gassing and what is the tissue limit which i will explain in a minute so first billman was uh, doing his uh, uh, his algorithm, algorithm was based on 12 tissues so you can find zhl12 in some resources and then uh, he improved it to 16 tissues so what he think what he actually did he established let's let's call it I know that's the correct word in English but he established 16 tissue compartments these are not the tissues in our body it's not like tissue number one I it's actually I call it tissue because this is what is a common phrase in the diving community but these are not the tissues in our body these are mathematically calculated compartments that are actually uh, was that, 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 that the calculations are, uh, are, are, are based on so the, the first one is the fastest one and the 16th one 
is the uh, so, so, sorry, the first one is the fastest one, and 16 is the, is the slowest one, which means that tissue number one from Billman algorithm is on gassing and off gassing the fastest, and the tissue number 16 is on gassing and off gassing the slowest. Just again, keep in mind that these are not real tissues in our body, these are mathematical compartments. We call them tissue compartment or, or Billman compartment or whatever yeah. other names you can find on the internet. So these are like, like mathematical models that the algorithm uh, is actually actually using. So what actually Billman was publishing is in, in, his, in, his, uh, in his research is basically those 16 tissue compartments that our body is mathematically divided to. And then we have a super saturation uh, phrase. The super saturation is important to understand. The super saturation is the state or the status when the pressure in the tissue is higher than ambient pressure. So on our graph, every time we are on the, on the red zone, on the red part of the graph, it means that our tissue is super saturated. So if you think about it, we need a super saturation. It's necessary to be super saturated. Otherwise, we can never off gas. Remember, we have, we have to create the, the, def, the, the pressure difference between our tissue and our lungs to off gas. And that, that pressure difference is uh, called super saturation if in the tissue the pressure is higher than the ambient. So once again, to make sure it's clear, the super saturation is the status of tissue or state of tissue when the pressure in of the gas dissolved in the tissue is higher than the ambient ambient, ambient pressure. The next the next thing that the Billman was uh, was establishing is supersaturation limit. Remember my example when we was was diving to 40 meters, we spend there 24 minutes, and then we go directly to the surface. We will will end up on our uh, example with the pressure in our tissue of 4.5 uh, bar which we know it's much too much so super saturation limit is actually what is controlling our decompression every tissue compartment so now in the next in the uh, next part of my presentation i will just simply use in every tissue in our body but remember that the algorithm is not calculating this for our real tissues, it's calculating for theoretical, mathematical tissues, but let's simplify it. So every tissue in our body has a limit of the supersaturation that this tissue can be exposed to without creating the compression sickness. So we can supersaturate our tissue, that's fine, but we cannot supersaturate them too much. Because if we supersaturate those tissues too much, which simply means if we create too much pressure difference of our uh, pressure in our tissue and an ambient pressure, we may have decompression sickness. And this supersaturation limit, uh, I will just give an example of the supersaturation on our graph. Let's go back to our 40 meters dive example. Let's imagine that. We was diving on 40 meter. We spend there whatever was necessary to get fully saturated. So we are here on our equilibrium line. And now let's imagine just for the exercise that the tissue that this graph is representing can be super saturated maximum of four bar, which means the pressure difference in that tissue cannot, cannot be more than two bar, more than an ambient pressure. So, simply, if we are on the, the starting pressure in our tissue is 5 bar because it's fully saturated at 40 meters. We know that we cannot supersaturate it more than 2 bars of difference. So, it means that the, that tissue can be exposed to, at that moment, can be exposed to minimum of 3 bar, maximum 3 bar of ambient pressure, which simply means at that point we can ascend. To 20 meters depth because the ambient pressure at 20 meters is 3 bars our tissue loading is 5 bars so then the pressure difference super saturation will be 2 bar and this is our maximum super saturation limit so now we have to stop otherwise 
will exceed our maximum super saturation limit allowed, uh, limit that is allowed for that particular tissue. Give me a thumbs up if the super saturation uh, is clear for you guys, because it's important that, that we understand uh, what's the super saturation. Uh, now I'm in stress because I see that the Simon Tyler Watson is here, who was my first Revo instructor, which now I'm in stress if I'm doing everything right. So hello Simon, greetings for you, I hope you're well. Just don't be mad if I said something wrong, <laughs> which I don't think I will. Okay, great. So the super saturation is, is clear to us. So I'm sure everybody heard the famous M value of Billman. And the M value is the last thing that we're gonna discuss. That was the part of the Billman research. Uh, he actually took it for Workman, but he developed it. So the M value, the Billman M value is simply the maximum super saturation limit of the tissue. So every tissue has its own M value because every tissue of 16 tissue compartment from Billman algorithm has its own M value, which means every tissue can be exposed to different supersaturation uh, limit. And this is happening for all 16 tissue at this, tissues at the same time. You could imagine that the graph that you see on the screen right now is calculated 16, 16 times in the background for every 16 tissue compartment of Binman. And this M value is simply a line on the graph. This is mathematically calculated uh, line on the graph, which represents maximum tissue supersaturation. You can see that that tissue is not parallel to the equilibrium line. So if somebody is good with, uh, with reading the graphs, you can actually see that the supersaturation limit at depth allowed is higher than in the, in the shallow depths, which is correct. Deeper we are, the higher supersaturation limit the tissue can be exposed to without creating the compression sickness. So now, if we have our M value, I will call it Billman M value line on the, on the graph, we can see how our ascent will look like. So we spent our whatever time was needed on 40 meters to get fully saturated. So the pressure in our tissue is 5 bar, ambient pressure is again 5 bar. Remember, we are simplifying those numbers to make the calculations easier. And now we ascend. So before we are ascending all the way up. So we are ascending until we get one bar of ambient pressure. But unfortunately, that is impossible in real diving because at some point we are reaching the maximum supersaturation limit. Look, remember when we were discussing, every time we are on the, on the red part of the graph, we are in off-gassing zone, which is the compression zone. So we are actually super saturated. We, we just super saturated our tissues. And normally we could, we could go all the way up, but we know that we cannot. We cannot because at some point we have reached the maximum super saturation level. In other words, we've reached, we've reached Billman's M value. We cannot go any further, we cannot ascend anymore. We have to stop right now. If we don't stop right now, we may have the compression sickness. So we have to stop. Once we stop, it means that left or right, will nothing happens. So we don't go left, we don't go right on the graph. We just stay on a constant depth, constant ambient pressure. But since we are in the off-gassing zone, we are, we'll be losing the gas from our tissue. We will be off-gassing. So on the graph, that's 20 meters stop, yeah? So on the graph, we will go down. So we will go down and we could wait there again as long as we reach our uh, equilibrium line. And then again, if we stay on that, the compression stop uh, five hours, it will not change much. But at some point, when we off-gas our tissue, again, look now, we again, we can reduce the ambient pressure, which means we can again ascend a few meters up until one more time we will hit our M value line and we have to stop again. So now when we stop, because we are in a off-gassing zone, 
we will re reduce the pressure in our tissue. On this example, actually, I was waiting until I get to equilibrium line. At that point, there's, there's no point for me to stay any longer on that stop because I will not off-gas any more. So I can ascend. And I have to do it as long as I reach the pressure of one bar ambient without exceeding or crossing to the other side of M value line. So now the question for you guys, what is this red line represents? What we just draw on that graph? This lines up, uh, sorry, down, left, down, left. What are these lines? La write me in a comment. What do you think? Now this, this 15 seconds delay is really a pain in the ass because you ask the question and then you have to wait for the answer and you, know, and you don't know if the audience just simply don't answer or, or didn't get that question yet. Uh, exactly. Shane, very well. Exactly. So what we just did, we just draw the compression profile, the compression stops, however you call it. Look, here we ascend, here we wait on our deco stop until we can ascend again, then we wait again on our deco stop until we can ascend again once we reach the surface. This is simply our decompression profile. So this is why we have to do our decompression. Is because simply because we cannot go directly to the surface because there is a green line somewhere there that we called M value line that cannot be exceeded. It cannot be crossed to the other side. Otherwise, we will supersaturate our tissue too much and we will have the compression sickness. So this is simply is that. And this is what your computer is doing. This is what your software is doing. This is how the, the, the Billman tables or Haldan tables are based on. Simply they are calculating what is the pressure in the tissue, what is the maximum supersaturation level, level, uh, level allowed, and then we know when and for how long we have to stop. And the, your computer is doing nothing else than this graph, just it's using correct and real numbers. So, before we go to gradient factors, we have to explain one more thing. Now on this graph, we will do more or less the same thing as we did right now, but now we will do this for two tissues, fast tissue and slow. Whichever they are, doesn't matter. And now it will be one more simplification. Uh, I told you before that every tissue has its own M value. So we should have two M value lines on that graph if we are explaining two tissues and that is correct but to make it easier let's imagine that those two tissues have the same n value it will be easier for us to understand what i'm trying to tell you so we have two tissues fast and slow uh, which, uh, w w whatever they are so we descend and you can you can determine fast and slow tissue Im immediately after the descent because look the fast tissue, because it's on gassing faster, just after the des descent, let's imagine it took whatever, four minutes, three minutes to get to 40 meters, it already saturated to this level, whatever it is, and the slow tissue is slightly angled, it's almost nothing, yeah, because it's very slow tissue. So we get to 40 meters, we stay on the rack, we enjoy it, so we are on gassing our tissues. So when we are on gassing our tissues, we simply go up on our graph and you can see that let's again for the sake of the exercise let's imagine that the red tissue is tissue number one of Billman so after 24 minutes our fast tissue is fully saturated because it's reached the equilibrium line but our slow tissue is just slightly it's not even a halfway up right so let's say it was 24 minutes and now we ascend. Perfect. So when we ascend, and now you have to be very careful to make sure you understand. So now when we ascend, the first thing you should notice is that those two lines have a different angle. 
the fast tissue, because it is right now in the off-gassing zone, is angled down because that tissue is off-gassing. But our slow tissue is actually still on gassing. It's taking more gas into it because we didn't spend enough time at the depth to fully saturate that tissue, so it's still the ambient pressure is higher than the pressure in that tissue. So that tissue will on gas. Now look, we've reached our first decompression stop because the fast tissue is super saturated to the maximum level that it is allowed for that tissue. But at the same time, the slow tissue is still on gassing. So it doesn't make sense to stop for that tissue because now we're only putting we're, we're only putting more gas into it. But we cannot ascend more because the fast tissue is stopping us. There's always one that is stopping us. We call it a leading tissue. So there's always one of the 16th Billman tissue is always a leading one. So it means this is the one that is touching the M value line. There's always one line. I want to say something different, but it's always, always one. So in this case, let's say we start to stop. This, this is more or less, what, 20 meters stop? And now we stop. So we, we, we do our decompression stops, stop because of the fast tissue. And now look on this decompression stop. Our first decompression stop that was, that was caused by fast tissue our slow tissue is still on-gassing. It will be on-gassing as long as it will reach equilibrium line. But it is taking gas in. This tissue is off-gassing and that tissue is on-gassing. And now, again, we are far away from M-value line with our both tissues. So we can again go a little bit shallower, we can ascend and at some point we can ascend again until any of our tissue will hit the M-value line. And this time is again the fast one, so we have to stop. On that stop, the slow tissue is already all in the off-gassing zone as well, so it, now it's not that bad. If, uh, if we stop, that tissue will off-gas as well. Okay, so we wait, and then again we can go shallower because we are far away from the M-value line. So the another few meters up we can go and now what I want you to see is if you use your imagination or the next slide you can see if we go further with our our lines you could see that the fast tissue could go already to the surface look I've just reached the one bar pressure which means I hit the surface without exceeding the M value line. So I can surface, I can, right now I can finish my dive. But I cannot do this because if I do this, I will cross the M value line for the slow tissue. So now the slow tissue is actually the leading one. And this is how our decompression actually is done. In the very beginning, on the deep stops or first decompression stops, the slow tissues are the leading one. And at the end of the dive, the, the fa sorry, the fast tissues are the... One more time to make sure. On the deep part of the dive, on the first decompression stops, the fast tissues are the leading one, and at the end of the dive, the slow tissues are leading a leading one. So now we have to stop because of the slow tissue, and our fast tissue is, of course, still off-gassing. It doesn't have to anymore, but it, it is. So now, once we hit the surface, when the, all the tissues, in our example, is only two, but in a real algorithm, it's 16. Now, we've hit the surface with all the tissues without exceeding the M value line for any of it. So now we can see that after that dive, the, the gas loading in the, in the fast tissue is much less than the gas loading in the slow tissue, simply because that both, both both the tissues spend the same amount of time on the same depths, but the, the fast one is faster, so it gets rid of the uh, gas faster, so it, it off-gas uh, much more gas. So this is super important to understand. And now 
I want to refer it, and then I promise we go to gradient factors. I want to refer this to the tissue graph on the she water. I'm sure there's a, a lot of you guys here are using the she water computers. Uh, I think it's the most popular technical computer actually in the world. And what you have on that graph, you can see this during the dive, before the dive whatsoever. Here, you can actually see 16 lines, 16 horizontal lines, which represents 16 tissue compartments of Bilman algorithm. The top one is the fast one, and the bottom one are the slow one, okay? The red line, the red part here, is our super saturation limit, our M value line. It is determined by your gradient factor, but this is maximum super saturation you can create. Your computer will never allow you to go to the red line because that means that this tissue can create a decompression sickness. And now look, once we descend and when we are on the bottom uh, face of the dive, or even our, we start our ascent from the depth, our fast tissue on that graph, I, can, I don't know if you can see it, but the tissue number one, two, and three are the ones that are the most super saturated because the fast tissue are the ones that are playing the major role here. At some point, when we start ascent even more, that first fastest tissue will hit the red line at some point, and this is when Shiwater will tell you, you have to stop. Now you, it's your decompression stop at whatever depth it is, okay? And then when you stay there, you are off gassing, so those lines will go back, will go back to the left side because they will get rid of the gas. And next time you will do your decompression dives with your tissue, turn that screen on. Now with seen some updates before, that screen, screen will never turn off. You can observe, you can look, which tissues from 16 Billman tissue compartments are super saturated at what level and you can never exceed the red one. So this graph will perfectly show you that in the beginning of your ascent, the fast tissue will be the most to the right side, but at some point when you are on the last stop or on nine meters, you will see that there are more the middle ones and at some point maybe the, the slowest one will be the leading one. So this graph is perfect tool, first of all, to kill time on decompression, and second, to understand how it works and at what depth, which part of your body, okay, not body, which tissues are actually the leading one. So this is perfect situation. This is exactly what we just uh, did on our graph. It's just our blue and value line is the red line here and our super saturation, so everything on the right side from here, is our uh, off-gassing zone. And our she water is calculating your decompression stop based on the same graph. It's just doing this, let's say here we have three dimensions, two dimensions graph, and here is differently uh, graphically represented, but it's the same calculations. There's always one tissue that is hitting the M value, then we have to stop, then the tissue loading is, is lowering down, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, great. So, if we understand this, we can ask ourselves a question. Is the pure Bielman safe? Which means, if we use a pure Bielman M value to calculate our decompression stop, will that be safe? So, other way around, or maybe using a different word, Word, if we use the supersaturation maximum limit that was calculated by Bielman to be safe, will that be safe? Well, the question is no. Right now, after let's say the years of experience in, in, in diving using the Bielman algorithm, we know that it's not exactly working perfect simply because these are mathemat math mathematical tissue compartments. They have not much to do with the human body. This is mathematically, experimentally created mathematical algorithm, which was not much tested on humans. At some point at the end, it was tested on US Navy guys. So super healthy. I don't know what's the average age of, of the Navy, but 
for sure they are super young, super healthy, perfect bodybuilders, just like Adam. So for these guys, maybe the Billman works perfect. And also we have to understand that what is, perf what is perfect, simply some level of the compression sickness in Navy is acceptable. It's fine. You know, I don't know how much they accept, but at some point they say, okay, if we have this amount of DCS, we, we can survive. We, we can live with that. We, for recreational diving, we want that to be more safe. But what is more important, why the Bill, pure Billman algorithm is not safe, is simply because it did, didn't take into consideration those factors like age, dehydration, uh, anxiety, uh, conditions, physical conditions of the diver, procedural errors. The Billman algorithm was created mostly using the mathem mathem mathematical calculation and the hyperbaric chambers. So if he decided to ascend from 40 meters to 20 with the ascent rate of 9 meters per minute, that was easy. Okay, For us, as a divers, it's not so easy. And I will even say it's impossible. I don't think there is any diver, any diver that can ascend from 40 meters to whatever, 20 meters, exactly with the 9 meters per minute ascent rate. It's simply impossible. You can do it on the elevator, you can do it in a hyperbaric chamber, but you cannot do it in real life. So every time you don't do it, every time you ascend too fast, you're doing something different than the Billman was doing in his research. So now I don't know if I can still use Billman's M value because I didn't do exactly what he was doing on his uh, experiments, let's call it, okay? So we need conservatism. And we know that we need conservatism for years. Every diving computer has some level of conservatives implemented, like 1, 2, 3, 20, 30, 50, whatsoever. And what conservatism does is simply moving our, let's call, personal M value away from real Billman or pure Billman M value. So we're just slightly moving this away. So we will not get as super saturated as Billman was actually allowing to us. So now we do exactly the same thing as we did before. We ascend, we hit our super saturation level, then we have to stop. For our example, this is on 30 meters. Look, if we will be following pure M value line of Billman in this example, we, can, we could go all the way to 25 meters. But because of the safety margin that we want to apply to Billman algorithm that is just shifted away from, from M value of Billman, we have to stop deeper. So the rest of the dive is exactly the same. It's basically doing the same thing. Uh, just hold on, I just did something wrong here. Wrong slide. Okay, so I, I, we have our safety line. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Okay, here. Okay. Let me see. Where are here? Okay, good. So we need the conservatism, okay? And we can even describe the level of, co on, of, on, of conservatism in percentage. So let's imagine this is the zoom in for, for the bottom part of our dive. Here you see this is our tissue that gets fully saturated to our, let's say, five bar, if that is 40 meters. We here have our M value line of pure Billman. So we know that actually all the way up until I hit the M value line, this is 100% percentage of what Billman said it's allowed to do. So if here is the pressure of five bar and here is the pressure of six bar, it means I can super saturate that tissue by one bar and I will be safe, okay? So this is 
100 percentage of of Billman. Okay. So now we can go to our bottom uh, to our shallow part of the dive. Here is the zoom in on the beginning of the dive. And remember, all about decompression, you, can, you, you do everything you can to reach the surface line without exceeding the M value line of Billman. So in other words, this is the fastest way to get to the surface, because here is the point where you can reach the surface, hit one bar pressure without exceeding the M value line. So, so this is Billman's 100% of the super saturation allowed at the moment when you hit the surface. So we can imagine we have two points. We can imagine what is the super saturation limit allowed when we hit the surface and what is the super saturation limit once we start our, our decompression. I know it's starting to be a little bit complicated, but we'll get to that, okay? So, now the question is, do we need the same level of conservatism through the entire ascent phase? Because as you see before, this safety margin line is simply shifted away from the M value line on the same distance on the bottom part of the dive and on the shallow part of the dive. And the question is, do we need that? And then all this history comes with the deep stops, do we need the deep stops, do we want the deep stop, deep stops, are they good, are they bad, and so on, and so on. And we had a nice presentation from Mark Powell a few days ago about the deep stops, so I think it's recorded, so we can go and, and, and read it. I'm not gonna get into this, but what is important for us is, is, the, is as following. First of all, we have to consider the leading tissues. I already told you before that uh, at the depth, you've seen this on the graph, the fast tissue are the one that are the leading tissues, okay? What does it mean that the fast tissues are, are the leading tissues? It means that if you do something not exactly correct, if you get the compression sickness at the bottom part of the dive or during the deep part of, of your decompression, most likely that will be the compression sickness created or caused by fast tissues. And now, what is fast tissue? If now we try to, to connect those Billman's tissue to our body, the only th the, the thing we the, the thing we know is that the tissue is, the fast tissues are those that are well perfused. So more bloodstream, better, uh, better uh, gas distribution. So if we consider, if we agree that the, the fast tissue are the ones that are well perfused, so now it's a little bit easier to connect this with our body. So we can say that the fast tissues are the bloodstream, uh, the nervous system, brain, spine, uh, middle ear is a very well perfused part of our bodies. So these are those parts of our uh, It's okay because it's a delay. I don't know if you can hear me. Because, okay, now we're back. Okay, guys, so again, if you've seen on the graphs that the fast tissues are, are the ones that are getting fully supersaturated or they are getting supersaturated to the maximum level allowed at the bottom part of our decompression. And if the fast tissue are the well perfused one, which is the, the blood, spine, brain, middle ear, and so on, then I can have very that feeling about that, because think about it. What are the symptoms of the compression sickness of the brain or the spine or the bloodstream? Okay, it, they are not really nice. Uh, loss of consciousness, uh, loss of uh, loss of coordination, the dizziness, uh, vomiting, you name it. And the question is, do I want to play with those things when I'm at the deep part of my dive? Imagine you're on the 100 meters, and let's say that your first tissue will hit super saturation line at 60 meters. Do you want a risk of the compression sickness of that tissue at that depth, having in mind the fact that you still have 40 minutes of deco to do, so you cannot simply ascend? Probably not really. 
okay? So if the decompression sickness of fast tissue is not really nice to us, and it may happen on the deep part of the dive, I don't want to play too much there, okay? So if Bielman tells me, here is your 100, here is what my Navy guys can do, this is 100% of the supersaturation. I may say, okay, if these guys can do 100%, if this is day 100%, I'm not Adam, I, I want to do like 40, maybe even 30. So, because I don't want to play with my fast tissue during my, my deep part of the dive. And this is where the fast tissue are playing the main role. So, I want to keep a high conservatism level of fast tissue at the depth. So, I'm telling to myself, okay, my conservatism on the deep part of the dive, I want to do just, let's say, 20% of the Billman. Let's call it, okay? E example just, you know, out of the blue. So, if the Billman told me this tissue can be super saturated of whatever bar it is, I do only 20% of it, and then I stop, okay? And then... If we remember correctly from our examples, on the shallow part of the dive, the last stops, our fast tissue, they are already fine, they can go to the surface. You could ascend to the surface and those fast tissue will be okay. The problem is with the slow tissues. And the slow tissues, is, there are those that are not well perfused, so the ones that uh, don't distribute the gas that fast, and also the on gas and off gas slower, so you know, the, the bones, uh, I don't know, fat is considered this and that because it's well perfused but, but slowly saturating uh, tissue. So anyway, what we know is, first of all, those decompression sim symptoms of slow tissues most likely occurs after the dive. When you ascend, a few minutes after, you may feel the compression sickness most likely of slower, I want to say only the slow one, it's slower tissues. And, or maybe on a shallow stop. Of course, everything depends how deep you were diving and how long did you spend there and so on. But these are the basic, basic principles. So the compression thickness of the slow tissue is, let's say, not that bad. Don't get me wrong, it is always bad to get bent, but slow tissues are not causing us life threatening thing. Of course, you know, if you ascend from 100 meters to the surface, also your slow tissue will kill you immediately, but most of the dives we do, the slow tissue, let's say, can be handled, let's call it. I can get an oxygen, I can go to hyperbaric chamber, whatsoever, I can deal with it somehow. If I get the compression sickness of fast tissue while being on 70 meters, probably I'm, 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 I'm in a big trouble. If I get the compression sickness on the shallow stop or after the dive, then my chances are, let's say, bigger to survive. So I can tell to myself, okay, if that's the case, Maybe I don't have to do only 20% of what Billman allows me on the shallow part of the dive. I can do more. I'm, I'm like Adam. I can do 70. <laughs> I hope Adam don't mind me using Q here as example. So, yeah, I can use 70 or even 80% of what Billman is allowing to me. Okay? So what I just did, I simply told to myself, okay, so here... On the bottom part of the dive, I can do only 30% what Billman allows me to do. And when I hit the surface, my tissue can be super saturated only of 70% of what Billman tells me I can do. So I've created two points on my graph. And if I simply connect those two points, what I get is the new personal gradient factored M line. So it's exactly the same thing as Billman M value line. Line is just angled differently because it's angled simply to achieve this goal, having much more conservatism as a bottom face of the dive and having uh, less conservatism when we ascend. So we cannot, we could not achieve this by simply doing standard conservatism level, like 1, 2, 3, 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever, because then I have the same level of, of safety or of the same level of conservatism all the way up. In this case, 
I can man, I can adapt, I can change the level of my conservatism in each part of the dive. So I assigned the different conservatism level at the depth, and then I can assign different conservatism level when I ascend or on the shallow part. And by doing this, I'm just simply creating the new, let's call it virtual M value of my decompression profile. And all the rest is is happening exactly the same as before. I just ascend, I get some point of supersaturation, I have to stay, wait until I off-gas some gas, then I can ascend again and again and again. And once I can hit one bar of the pressure without exceeding this line, we can even say that I can surface when I have 70% of Billman's supersaturation allowed, I'm happy. And again, the same calculations are happening 16 times in the, in, in the background, and whenever any of the tissue uh, is touching this new M value line, my computer tell me, tells me you have to stop. And so the, the, so the idea of gradient factors is simply that we don't have we don't want to have the same level of conservatism throughout all the ascent. I want to be more conservatism at the deep part of the dive. And I want I may be less conservatism as uh, the shallow part of the dive because of the tissues that are causing the decompression sickness in each part of the dive. And look, if if you think about this line, this percentage of Billman supersatura supersaturation will start with 30 and it will slowly go from 30 to 70. So 30, 31, 30, 40, 45, all the way up. So your supersaturation level of your tissues is increasing with the depth. So, so it's the other way around. So when you go shallow, shallower you are, your supersaturation level is higher, allowed by your new M value line. So for those of you who are actually using Shewater or the Mares Genius, it also has that feature. You you can you can see what is your supersaturation limit in percentage. This is GF99 uh, option. You can see at that moment how much I am supersaturated of pure Billman. So if everything is fine, and let's say you have your gradient factor 30 and 70, you always are between those two. You start with 30 and you go slowly, slowly up to 70. And when you hit the surface, your supersaturation of the leading tissue, because there's always one that is the most supersaturated, is will be the 70 if your gradient factor is 70. So this is nothing else than a way of creating conservatism, but on a different level on the deep part of the dive when the fast tissue are controlling one and the shallow part of the dive when the slow tissues are, con are controlling one. So you can imagine that everything that is dotted red line is the safety compared to pure Billman algorithm. So you can see that here on the deep part of my dive, I am far away, I, all this line is my conservatism level, and here I have just a slightly uh, conservatism level. I can even do more and here is the 70% of what Billman said because all the way up from the surface to the M value line is 100 and this is this is the 70, 70 percentage. So now let's see the two examples. So gradient factors there are always two numbers gradient factor low and gradient factor high. The gradient factor low the first one is this super saturation level in percentage that is allowed when we start our ascent. So this deep gradient factor, let's call it. So now on this graph, we have two, let's say, M value lines, this gradient factored M value lines. The yellow one is when the gradient factor is 50%, so 50% of what Billman said, and blue, blue one is 20. So how does it work in practice? We ascend and we have to stop when we hit our, let's say, we are following now the 20 low gradient factor. So now we have to stop on 30 meters. If 
our gradient factor would be 50, it means we can continue ascent. We don't have to stop on 30 meters. We can go all the way up until we hit 50% of Bielman supersaturation. And that will be, let's say, on 25 meters. So this is very simple, uh, simple uh, conclusion. The gradient factor low is actually determining your depth, the depth of the first decompression stops, stop. So if the gradient factor is lower, the lower value of low gradient factor, it means you're allowing yourself of less supersaturation compared to pure Bielman algorithm, so you have to stop deeper. There is no other way. So you do more deep stops. Okay? If you increase your low gradient factor, let's say to 50%, you can go shallower and that there will be your first stop because you are fine with supersaturating your fast tissue 50% of what Bielman was actually was actually saying so if somebody is using gradient factor gradient factors and he's saying that I don't do deep stops it, it's not true the gradient factors are the way of doing deep stops because whatever number you put as long as it's not 100%, which we'll get to, to that in a minute, there will be always some deeper stop than pure Birman, Birman algorithm. So the low gradient factor, to make it even more simple, is about the deep stops. If you want to do more deep stops, that number should be lower. If you want to have less deep stops, that number should be higher. Simple as that. The high gradient factor, oh, I missed one slide. Okay, no, I didn't. So now it's again a very important reminder. Remember our graph, now we're still talking about the, I'm sorry, we are still talking about the low gradient factor. So remember that we have to consider when we just choose the low gradient factor, the, the fact I was explaining to you before, that when we do our first decompression stop, it's because one of the fast tissue is causing it, and most likely our slow tissues are, are still on gassing. So if we will stop, let's say here, because we will put our low gradient factor only 20% of, of what Billman said, I have to stop here also with my slow tissue. So remember, as long as that tissue is in the blue zone, it is on gassing. So, more time that tissue will spend on the blue zone, it will take more gas. So deep stop has advantage of not risking the compression sickness of fast tissue, but has a disadvantage of uh, on gassing more slow tissue. So I'm not going into the deep stop theory. It's not about this decompression. Again, Mark was doing this quite well a few days ago. But just to understand how this gradient factor affects your dive. If you, you know, if, if you want to be a super, super safe, you could say, okay, so my, uh, my low gradient factor, I will put 10%. I would do just 10% of what Billman is allowing to me. But that has the consequences of on-gassing more slow tissues. And that will have a consequences on the length of your decompression because you have to give the time for this slow tissue to off-gas as well. And if you don't do it, you will have the compression sickness after the dive on the surface, but still, okay? And now, the high gradient factor is a little bit difficult to explain on the graph, but imagine I told you the high gradient factors tells, tells you simply this. This is how much supersaturation of pure Billman in percentage I'm allowed to have in the moment when I hit the surface, okay? So, if I choose 50% of super, Bielman supersaturation, I, I can hit the surface only if I'm from that point to that point. I have to hit this line somewhere here. So, obviously, I have to wait longer until I get here and I can go to the surface if compared to, let's say, gradient factor 90. Because if I use, uh, if I use gradient factor 90, then I can go to the surface 
anywhere here. So if my stop was, let's say, here, I go down, I go down, and once I'm on that point, I can already go to the surface and I'm not exceeding my gradient factor and value, let's call it. So the gradient factor high is simply determining how long your decompression will be. And again, if you put your gradient factor low, very conservatism, low value of low gradient factor, you will have a consequences of, of gassing slow tissues and then depends on your high gradient factor, you will spend as that much time on the shallow dive. And again, that can be fine for you or maybe if you ascend with whatever, 90% of what Billman said, you will end up feeling not very well and after 10 minutes, you go to the, after 10 minutes of, of surfacing, you will experience the compression sickness and you have to go to the hyperbolic chamber, which means 90% of supersaturation once you hit the surface, most likely slow tissues, is not fine for you. Okay? So, just to simply summarize it, image is not clear anymore, okay? On my laptop it's all fine, so I hope... I'm recording this anyway, I will probably put this on YouTube later on, so, so that the quality will be, will be better. So, just to summarize these gradient factors. We have two values. The first one is gradient factor low, and the second one is gradient factor high. Gradient factor low is basically the percentage of Bullman supersaturation level allowed at the bottom part of the dive, which, practically speaking, determines how deep will be your first decompression stop. Keep in mind that the deeper it is, more of the on-gassing of slow tissue will have a place, and the high gradient factor simply tells you this is the supersaturation limit of Billman in percentage allowed when I hit the surface. So, if you follow your GF99 feature on your computer that is telling you what is the supersaturation limit in percentage of pure Billman at that moment of your leading tissue, so the one that is most supersaturated, you will never, you, you should never be, have, you should never have higher value there than your high gradient factor, because this is how it is designed. It is designed that once you hit the surface, you never get more than whatever, 70, okay? So gradient factor high 70 simply means when you hit the surface, you have 70% of what Bielman was saying you are allowed to. And there's always a question which gradient factor you I should use. And I will not tell you that question because the idea of creating the gradient factors, why they were created, is simply because everybody has a different body. <laughs> Sounds funny, but it's true. From some people, uh, supersaturation at depth is not good, they feel bad, so they shouldn't supersaturate themselves much at depth. So then they should use a low value of the gradient factor. Some other people, they can, they can be exposed to very extreme supersaturation level when, when they finish the dive, like 90 or 95% and they still feel fine, but some other people don't. So this is something you have to figure out by yourself. If I'm not wrong, the Shewater uh, default gradient factor is 30, 70. So 30 percentage of Billman at the bottom part of the dive and 70 when you surface. And what I was actually doing a few times, I was, I was just diving every day, doing a deep dives around 100 meters, and I was playing with those numbers. So I, at first I was playing with the deep stops. So one day I, did, I, I had the gradient factor 20, then I had 30, 40, and I was checking how I feel after the dive. And then I was trying to have some results, but then you don't know if you feel a little bit more tired, is it because of the gradient factor, or maybe this is because this is the third day of the diving, or maybe you were less hydrated, that's many factors. So, but, but for sure, we can play with those numbers to, to determine our deep stops, and to determine what I call our safety in general, because there's always not too much of decompression, 
this can be actually also discussed, but let's 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 call it. So you may say that the high gradient factor is low, the, the low is the best. Yeah, because if you put let's say 30, 50 gradient factors, so you will stay a long, long time on the shallow stop, so you are off gas very well, but then your decompression will be extremely low. If you put your low gradient factor too high, I know to 70 you will have to ascend from let's say 100 meters to 21 exactly with the speed of 9 meters per minute because this is what your algorithm is assuming if you don't do it you break the algorithm you just do, do something wrong you may have have a decompression sickness because of it so this all factors have to take into consideration when you choose your gradient factors and nobody can tell you uh, nobody can cannot tell you which is uh, the best one. To me, I use a relatively high supersaturation limit at the deep part of the dive because my body doesn't cope well with the deep stops. I prefer not to do them too much. Remember, you always do deep stops when you use grain factors. So I, I use relatively high low gradient factor. And then uh, my high gradient factor is, let's say, I usually say uh, use 70, but when, when I have a deco clear, I try to stay as much as I can if the water is warm, I have the time, I wait for my bodies whatsoever, because I, I'm still off-gassing. This is where you can nicely see this tissue graph if you have a she water and you see how your tissue are actually super saturated. Uh, and then you can actually hit the surface and then you see GF99 and you, you see that despite your gradient factor was 70, when you hit the surface, you are 60% of Bielman, just because this additional time is spent there, like safety stuff, let's call it. So for my dives, I'm trying, I'm trying to ascend with the GF99 of 60%, but you know, it's not always possible if the water is cold and so on, and you wanna go home, it's, it's waving whatsoever, then you don't do it. So this is how it works. So now I have a few questions for you just to check if you understand what I was just trying to explain correctly, okay? So just write me in the comments your answer, guys. So there was, the diver was using gradient factors 4070. And the diver experienced the compression sickness during the deep part of the dive. What modification, what should, what his gradient factor would be better for this person. 4070 decompression sickness symptoms in the deep part of the dive. So how this guy should change his gradient factor? Write me in the comments, what do you think? Yes, exactly. You said 30, 70, 20, 70, uh, changed uh, 40. Okay. Yes, exactly. So yeah, we should lower the low gradient factor because if the decompression sickness was in a deep part of the dive, it means it most likely it was caused by the fast tissues, so we have to supersaturate them less. So now we, we have a guy with 3090, and the compression sickness was, let's say, 10 minutes after surfacing. What changes would be best for him? Yes, exactly. We should lower the, the high, uh, the, high grade, uh, the, the 90 gradient factor. So, because this is our supersaturation, uh, once we once we hit the surface. All right, so now the question is, so what gradient factors would represent pure Billman? If somebody is crazy enough, I wanna, I wanna dive pure Billman. How should I uh, set up my gradient factors? What gradient factor settings is actually pure Billman algorithm? Yes, exactly, 100, 100 or 99, 99, that will be full Bielman supersaturation all the way up, okay? So, great, it looks like you guys you guys got it. That's, that, that's clear for you. So, just last one, that will be the tricky one. And I, I don't want you to explain, uh, answer to this, this to me now. I want you to answer this to me in the comments when we finish, or if somebody wants now, that's also fine, actually. So, what gradient factor is more conservative? 4070 or 3080? 
Okay? That's a question for you guys to think about it because it's not straightforward. So if you know, write the comment uh, after we finish our presentation uh, and then we can discuss this uh, on the comments and so on and so on. So, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I just would like to remind you one thing. I'm just doing this presentation for all of you, of course, for free. Uh, I'm just using the fact that many people is watching us to try to, to raise some funds for the dog shelter. Uh, the link of this found on the Facebook is actually in a comment of, of that movie. I would be very happy if you... Oh, I, can, I can show you one guy that came from this place. Oh, and this guy will be also very happy. If you if you pay any penny on that founding rise, <laughs> okay, guys. So thank you very much one more time for watching. So uh, if you like the presentation, please write me that in a comment. If you would like to hear a presentation about other topic, also please write me that in a comment uh, uh, below that movie. Maybe I will prepare some other one. Uh, most likely I'm interested is was I able to explain you how the gradient factor works and did you enjoy it so I'd be very happy to see even if you didn't like it just tell me it was shit <laughs> I can stand it and tell me what would you change in it I can also improve so one more time thank you very much for watching and stay safe stay healthy and let's go back for diving as soon as possible <laughs>